got some pretty sad news to report today. I'll progress into that. As most of you know, I progress in my videos from, and it's a storytelling scenario. I get into the subject of the video at the end of the video. A lot of people only watch 30 seconds of the video and gets mad that I haven't already addressed it. But that's just the way YouTube works. They'll tell you that when you start a channel. As you know, Carolyn makes our own chicken food. It makes about 90% of it. We still buy some chicken food from the store. Orschlin's is the store of choice. We're kind of a geographic anomaly. We're 20 miles from everything. There is one town 20 miles this direction that has an Orschlin's and a Walmart. And then there's another town 20 miles away the other direction, east and west, that is got a Walmart and an Orschlin's. And then there's another town that's got, which is 30 miles away, but that has nothing to do with anything. One of the things a lot of people ask me about is this right here. This is probably, in my opinion, she'll disagree with me, I'm sure, but in my opinion, one of the most important things that she could be doing, this is sunflower seeds. She takes sunflower seeds and she sprouts them. And what she does is for the first day, she soaks them in water. And then every day after that, I think for a week or two, she keeps them moist. You'll see here, maybe, that she has drilled holes in the cap. So what she'll do is she'll fill it up with water every day and then let it drain out. And that keeps them moist, not wet so they don't rot. And then it starts to sprout just like you see. And so she can turn a 50 pound bag of sunflower seeds into about 250 pounds. Of course, we grow our own sunflower seeds and we're gonna grow corn this year also. We've tried different things with the garden, but now that we're carnivores, we've decided that we are just going to focus on growing things for the chickens. So if we can grow 50 pounds of sunflower seeds, that should last us all year. Now she does several other things. She makes this mush, best way I know how to describe it. She's calling it corn grits. So what this is is a fancy scratch, scratch, so I think it's what it's called. You can buy that at Orschlins. And then she mixes in corn with it. So the mixture is one and a half cups of scratch and three cups of corn, and that's just whole corn. And she'll put that in water, stick it on the stove here, kind of let it evaporate out, and then she just feeds that to the chickens with the sunflower seeds. So now they're getting all the nutrition they need. I should mention, I meant to mention this at the beginning of the video, the reason I'm inside today is it snowed yesterday, yet last, well, night before last, and it started to melt. Well, then last night it got down to 19 degrees and everything refroze. It is difficult to walk outside. Everything is iced up. So I didn't think it'd be very smart to be outside with a camera, trying to hold the camera and ice skating at the same time. So I thought it'd sit in front of the wood stove. The problem with sitting right in front of the wood stove is it nearly burns me to death. But I know a lot of people like to watch the wood stove as it burns while I'm making my video. I almost waited too long. It's about burned out. Now, as you may remember, I've said in the past that Carolyn grinds up whole corn. It's gonna be hard to do without spilling it. So she takes whole corn kernels and she uses a grinding mill, a grain mill, I should say. And we bought that for her. She was using a meat grinder, a little hand crank meat grinder, but man, I felt so bad for her. She didn't want to buy the grain mill because that's just too much money. I think it was like 60 bucks. I mean, really, a lot of money. But finally, I talked her into it. She looked up the one she wanted and we got it for her. I've showed you that in the past. Got it off Amazon. You can buy electric ones. I tried to convince her to buy electric ones, but she said no. Could only do it when it was sunny and all that stuff, which isn't entirely true. But now the other thing she does is we had some noodles laying around. I mean, lots of noodles. Prior to being carnivores, we were like all the other preppers, stockpile, stockpile, stockpile. So we got rice and, and noodles. Well, now that we're carnivores, she ground all this up. And so she's treating this like flour. Every day she makes cornbread. So what she uses is the corn, the ground corn. She puts some eggshells in it. This is the eggshells that she's ground up with the grain mill that she's used. So we save all her eggshells. Well, I guess she's used them all. There's none in here right now. So she breaks them open. We eat the eggs. She rinses out the eggshell, lets them dry. In the summertime, we have that sun dehydrator. She puts them in there, they dry out. In the wintertime, she just puts them in a pan that's back here on the stove and lets them dry out on the stove. So now she can make cornbread. In that same pan, she mixes up cornmeal, the noodles, and the eggshells, and she makes cornbread. Every day, she takes the combination of all these things. So the cornbread, 
the corn grits, the mush, and the sunflower seeds. And she puts it in a tray and goes down there. And boy, I tell you, the chickens just love that stuff. We pretty much have gotten completely rid of having to buy store-bought chicken food, which is kind of good news. As you know, I think I showed you, what, two or three days ago, we're getting anywhere from six to 13 eggs a day. On average, I would say about seven is probably the best number that we're getting. But occasionally, we'll open it up and there's like 13 sitting in there. In wintertime, chickens don't produce as many eggs. Especially, I guess, around November, October, November to January, they go on what's called a molt, where they're losing their feathers, regrowing new feathers. So their energy is being put into that. So not, not eggs. Well, we really haven't had a reduction in eggs because I told you the other day, every third year we introduce new chickens in the springtime. Well, by fall time, they're producing eggs. Well, that first year they don't go into a malt. So every third year we butcher chickens and then we add new chickens. So we're always getting eggs through the malt season. But our production is doing pretty good. Most people are running out of eggs by now. But one of the things is, is because she, they're on such a high protein diet. Sunflower seeds is where they're gonna get their protein. If SHTF were ever to happen, this is what we would feed them. Sunflower seeds and stuff from around the yard. Uh, anything else that we may grow, corn, that kind of stuff. So essentially, she is almost treating our chickens as though we're already in SHTF with a little bit of supplement with the regular chicken feed, which is good news because we've been hearing reports and I just heard another YouTuber give a report, a lot of anecdotal evidence that Tractor Supply, now like I said, we get our chicken food from Orsland's, has a supplier or two that may be providing Tractor Supply with chicken food that doesn't have as much protein. And so we're hearing that the chickens eating this food are no longer producing eggs. Now a lot of YouTubers have blamed that on because it's winter time and the molt season is here. Now we're starting to hear from people who said, well, I've been raising chickens for 20 years and this is the first year I've never gotten any eggs, zero eggs. Usually you still get an egg or two or three or four a week, even from a, you know 12 chickens. But when you're getting zero, you know the red flags went up. This is very strange, why aren't I getting the eggs? So they're blaming Tractor Supply chicken food. Well now we're starting to hear these same people that weren't getting any eggs switched stores, maybe we went to an orphanage, I don't know. Now their chickens are starting to produce again. Now, another thing that bothers me is this bird flu. As you know, farmers from all over the country have been calling their chickens, and it's very torturous how they do it. They basically burn them to death because they've caught the bird flu, or there's evidence there's bird flu in their confinements. So millions of birds are being killed, which now has reduced the amount of eggs and chicken in the stores raising the prices. And I think everybody can recognize prices are going up on eggs and chicken. I know that the chicken we used to buy, the bag chicken, legs and thighs, 10 pound bag, went from $4.99 a bag to $9.90 since last spring. So less than a year, it's went up that much. It's almost, well, I guess more than double. They're blaming the bird flu. In my mind, there's really no evidence of bird flu other than what people are telling us. What happens is governments come out, do a test, or there's a sick bird, let's say there's a sick bird. Now remember, uh, uh, confinement has millions of birds in it. They see a bird that is sick, they report it like they're supposed to to the agencies. The agencies come out, they test the bird. Oh, you got bird flu, and all of a sudden they have to call all their chickens. Well, that's a pretty good work deal for the farmers because now they don't have any chickens, but they're still gonna get paid because the government's gonna supplement for their loss, raising prices of chicken. Now, I, there's all kinds of theories why they would want to raise prices of chickens, and it's all out there. It's not even really a secret anymore. The people who are trying to do it are actually bragging about it now. But you're not allowed to really say this stuff on YouTube because it's a big secret even though it's not a secret. Well, Carolyn was on Facebook the other day and she saw someone who posted that her personal flock, I think, I don't know, 29, 39, caught the bird flu and they all got sick over two days and died. I'm telling you, the story was just tragic. She was talking about how they, they lethargic and coughing and having seizures and just listed off all kinds of symptoms. And your heart is breaking. And then, of course, you turn into from heart is breaking to total fear. Oh my gosh, this is real. What if my chickens get it? Now, I've always said, I'm not too sure it's real. 
just like I said a minute ago. Well, then I'm, I'm listening even further. And she said after two days, they all died. Then she called the state in. They came out and did tests that, hey, it was bird flu. So she didn't even get to bury the poor chickens. That's what she said, because the state took the chickens. And then she said something really curious. If your chickens are sick, call your state veterinarian. They'll come out, test the birds and tell you if you have bird flu. And I thought, wait a minute. Why are you telling me this? Even though you didn't do it, you wait until they all died and then call the state. But you're telling us to call the state beforehand. So I started researching some of the claims that she made in this Facebook post. And the symptoms that she called out are not the actual symptoms of bird flu. She said they had seizures. I, I looked and looked and looked, couldn't find anything about seizures. Started discussing this with Carolyn, and Carolyn said, yeah, I thought the same thing. It looked, sounded a little suspicious to me. So we determined that it was a bot going around scaring everybody. The one disease that I am concerned about is called Merrick's disease. It's pretty relevant and it does give birds seizures. And it's pretty common if you don't get your chickens vaccinated. If you introduce a chicken to your flock that has Merrick's, it is most likely that all your chickens will get Merrick's and die. However, if you're careful and you keep everything separated, so you get a new chicken, you separate it from your flock, you see if it gets sick, if it doesn't get sick, then you're pretty sure that it's okay, and then you can introduce it. So give it two, three, four weeks, you'll find out if it's sick. So the symptoms that she was claiming sound like Merrick's to me. What they're suggesting is, if you have chickens and they get Merrick's, call it bird flu, we'll come out and call your chickens, then we'll say it's a pandemic, then we'll scare everybody, and eventually this virus is gonna transfer from chickens to humans, and then we're gonna have our next pandemic. And that's pretty much exactly what they've already said that's gonna happen. And I've heard on reports, government telling people the next pandemic is going to be the bird flu. Be suspicious, raise your own chickens, get your own eggs. Now I do have, like I said, some bad news to report. We bought some Brahmas this last spring and they were gonna be meat birds. We got, I think eight or nine, I don't remember, females and one, we actually got two males. One, we lost. Storm came through one night, they all got out, and that was the only one that we couldn't find. Well, that was okay. I mean, that's why we got two roosters in case we lost one. And it was nice that we lost the small one. The rooster that survived got up to probably 15 pounds. Now these Brahmas are huge, they're beautiful birds. But what we think happened was he got up on the roost and he's so heavy. I mean, he could walk fine and everything, but he's so heavy that when he jumped down, he broke his leg, foot, we couldn't do anything for him. I mean, we could have taken him to the vet and it would have been a huge cost. But instead of trying to deal with all that, well, of course we went ahead and butchered him. I mean, that's what we were gonna do anyways. Eventually we would have butchered him. If you'll click this up next box, take you a video where I was talking about the chicken coop. So I hope I can inspire you to feed your chickens and yourself self-sustainingly so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.